It's 1532. Spain is right in the middle of conquering large parts of the American continent. They crush the Inca army and capture the emperor, for whose release they are offered one room full of gold and silver. The Incas pay the ransom, not that it would help much, and literal shiploads of treasure set course for Spain. About 30 years later, the Spanish take another, much more precious Inca treasure back to the old world, oblivious to the fact that it will change the course of human history. The potato? Mr. Kappa, potatoes are boring. Can we go play now? I see. No. Although Europeans are the global potato-eating champs, prior to the 1500s, they didn't even know it existed. The potato began its journey in the Andean highlands of South America, where for thousands of years people have lived of hundreds of varieties, in all shapes, sizes and colors. Even some poisonous ones. Every part of the potato plant contains at least traces of toxic glycoalkaloids as a natural pest repellent that, if you ingest too much, will make you go dead. No need to feel the store-bought kind. Those are delightfully non-toxic. Don't eat the green bits though. Those are poisonous. By the way, no matter what your mom might have told you, potatoes aren't any more poisonous when uncooked. Nevertheless, you shouldn't eat them raw because the uncooked starch will give you a very bad time. What does help purge toxin from wild potatoes, and also makes them useful as a crop failure insurance, is a process of freezing, drying, freezing, drying, freezing, drying, trampling, peeling, freezing and drying. Until you hold in your hands a chuño, a dried, non-toxic potato. Expiration date? Never. If that's a bit too much work, only to enjoy a usually poisonous potato, you could also go full Andean native and dip your potatoes into a sauce of clay, water and salt, so the poison isn't absorbed by the body. On second thought, don't try that. Why would anybody go through all of that just to eat potatoes? Because A, they're one of the few edible things growing at 3 to 4,000 meters above the sea, and B, potato fields yield so much food. Granted. Rice, wheat and corn do deliver much more energy per kilogram, owed to the fact that potatoes are 80% water, but when eaten, they fill you up just as well. That plus the fact they munch up lots of CO2 and spit out oxygen even makes living potato plants a promising option for feeding Mars-bound astronauts. The Incas can also partly thank potato nutritiousness for enabling them to create an empire spanning most of South America's west coast. Well, could, until the Spanish came. Hey, we really like your natural resources and cheap laborers. Can we have some? Um, nah, we'll take some anyway. Also, this is your god now. Bow down. The Incas called the potato papa. The reason why we call them potatoes is because the Spanish instead adopted the Taino word for sweet potato, which is not a potato at all. Did you hear that? You're adopted. No. Potatoes are more closely related to eggplants and tomatoes, and luckily so, because that circumstance makes possible the existence of this most glorious of inventions, the pomato. Potatoes underground, tomatoes above. Potatoes today are nearly exclusively grown with seed tubers, meaning potatoes are put into the soil to grow into an autonomous plant spawning genetic clones of that seed potato. One could also go old school, growing potatoes by simply throwing seeds into the air and hoping for the best. Problem? Resulting potatoes will be really diverse, so with every seed you might create an exciting and delicious new potato variety, or you might get a weird looking bitter and possibly poisonous monster potato. When the potato first came to the old world, it had a pretty bad rep. Let it be known that this plant is evil, through and through. Tis not even mentioned in the good book. I myself tried from its fruit and became violently ill at once. <gasps> but as you might know, when it comes to potatoes you eat the tubers, not the fruit. Poisonous, remember? Europeans only really became friends with the potato as a peasant's raid prevention safety net in the many wars of the 17th and 18th century. Invading armies regularly seized all stocked food on their way through a village, leaving peasants with only dust in their bowls. 
That was easy enough with crops that start to rot if left on the fields too long. So when the soldiers came a-knocking, the grains were already in storage, ready for the taking. But in potato country, looting sucked because peasants could just leave potatoes in the ground until the day they'd eat them, handing invading armies a dig it up yourself or leave it proposition. From then on, the potato became every European peasant's darling, enabling a population explosion on a continent that had until then struggled to keep its poor fed. The potato became the peasant food. You know it would be great, hmm? If we only planted potatoes, we'll have so much food, it will be amazing. And why bother with many different varieties? Let's plant only one or two, they're nice enough. Absolutely, everyone's gonna be mad jelly. <sighs> yeah. So that's what millions of peasants did. We have a potato problem. What is it? They've gone bad. Like, Michael Jackson's bad? No, they're moldy. Well, throw them out and get fresh ones. What? Monocultures and a lack of diversity left potato fields vulnerable to pest and disease. So when late blight spread all over Europe in the 1840s, it destroyed the nutritional basis of existence for millions. Nowhere did the crisis hit as hard as in Ireland, where around one million people lost their lives to the famine and many more left the country in the years following. A remedy against late blight was eventually found, but even today scientists are fighting to keep potatoes free from legions of menacing pests, a consequence of the fact that today's potatoes are biological monsters we have bred to taste delicious, stay fresh for a long time and grow ever larger, but are unable to protect themselves. But with all that help from humanity, the potato continued its triumphant march around the world in cooked, mashed, roasted, baked, fried or chipped form. So that's the history of the potato. Coming from the Andean highlands of South America, it made its way to the Old World, where it supported the population explosion, caused devastating famines, fed soldiers, workers and peasants, and even reached the final frontier, ending its journey on your plate. End screen! If you like this video and want to support me in making more like it, you can do so on Patreon. In exchange, you get access to updates, wallpapers and illustrations, and you can even get your name into these here credits. That's all, thank you and goodbye.